Hey guys, it's Doc, and today we're going to talk about fall fertilizers. A video you don't want to miss. We're going to prepare you for fall, and you need to get ready now. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, and just so you know what I'm going to do, at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you some footage of me actually cutting the lawn, applying my fall fertilizer, and then what I'm going to do is go out the next morning and show you what it looks like and some of the results. Not really results, but just what it looks like. Hey guys, so I'm gonna be very direct and try and be brief as I can in this video to get you on track for the fall because it's really important. And I'm gonna cover some specific subjects. Before I start, everything I'm talking about, the information, I'm gonna try and link in the description below. There'll be a link to a web page, And I'm gonna put links to, uh, I'm gonna talk about AccuWeather forecasts. I'm gonna talk about mapping software different stuff like that and products and so I'll in that page you go click on that and it'll take you over a page you'll see this video on that page and I'll put links to stuff below that too all right so let's talk a little bit about fall fertilizers and we're going to talk about what type of fertilizer you're going to use you're going to talk about when the applications should be done uh, we're going to talk about NPK numbers we're going to talk about several different things but it really is a mindset and visual that you need to kind of understand. And so there is a unique tool that you can use. If it's simple, you just go to AccuWeather.com and I'm gonna put up a video here in a second just to sort of give you a mindset. Matter of fact, why don't I go ahead and I'll put up that quick video just to show you that this is a unique tool. If they base it on historical forecasts for your area and it's a great way to see when my temperatures start to drop and what I need to prepare for. So let me put up that video real quick. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you kind of a cool little visual trick really. Um, this is, just go to accuweather.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. I'm just gonna to go to Atlanta as an example. So I'm in Atlanta. So I click Atlanta and I want you to go over to the month tab. So you see a bunch of tabs at the top here, go to the month. And it brings up a calendar. Now, any of the dates that are in black, these black dates are historical, so that's the past. The blue dates are the future. And what's nice about this is I can see for the next one, two, three weeks, I'm into, well, the next two weeks I'm in the 90s, three weeks from now, all of a sudden I dip into the 80s. So I definitely wanna have fall fertilizer down for this week. But here's the nice thing. I can go to September and I can look at September. Now on September, look at this. Now I've got high 80s, mix of 80s, mix of 80s. And at the end of September, the last two weeks, I start to get into the low 80s and high 70s. Now, if I click on October, you're going to see that all of a sudden I'm starting to get into the 70s and even some highs in the 60s. Now, this is based on historical data, obviously and it's just predicted. But this is a great way to sort of say, okay, month by month and week by month, what do I need to be doing with my fertilizer applications? This is just a great tool to have. By the way, uh, I'm gonna go back to August as an example. And if you wanna look at your historical rainfalls, let's say I wanna go back to June, click this little list here and this will give you um, an actual list. And so you can get your precipitation and it'll show you the past precipitation on every single day. It's pretty accurate. Just a good little tool for you. Okay, so again, I'll put a link in the description to the AccuWeather. It's very simple, it's easy to use, but you get that visual mindset sort of month to month and week to week of when I need to be targeting these fertilizers. So let's talk about, first of all, when you should put out your fall fertilizers. Remember, we're really gonna be focused a lot on granular fertilizers a little bit of super juice maybe in between there every two or three weeks, but really the granular is what we're gonna focus on. We're gonna be putting out PGF Complete. Again, there'll be a link in the description below. PGF Complete sells out all the time, so if it says currently unavailable, just give it a few days, it'll be back in stock. But let's talk about the timing of this. I have had the absolute best results all year long with doing what I call stacking. What stacking is, is normally the average person will go out and take a large amount of fertilizer, try and pick the right window, 
and dump all that fertilizer out and just sort of just sit back and just sort of hope it's gonna everything's gonna work out well then a bunch of thunderstorms come through someone comes through and cuts your grass your fertilizer moves when you have thunderstorms come in you have pooling in your lawn and a lot of that fertilizer washes into pool areas and so you get uneven feeding so here's what I like to do the stacking method is I come out with PGF complete and I've been doing this all year now testing with it and it works phenomenal so if my date let's say my fertilizer date is September 1st so I want to get my fertilizer down September 1st well I'm gonna come out two or three weeks before that date and I'm gonna put a light coat out and a light coat for PGF complete is basically the regular rate because you're only putting out about 0.5 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet when you put it out at the bag rate one bag covers 5,000 square feet so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in about three weeks from then and I'm gonna do another coat of PGF complete so basically what I've done instead of lumping all this fertilizer boom down into one treatment I'm gonna break that apart into split treatments Then I'm gonna go a little bit earlier with my split treatment first and then right after that maybe two or three weeks later I'm gonna put another treatment down because these particles are extremely extremely fine you get real good distribution plus the other thing is is there are other factors you can't control cutting your grass you may have movement of your fertilizer storms coming through you may get pooling of your fertilizer and doing that split treatment breaking it apart just sort of ensures that you're gonna get good uniform coverage so what I'm gonna do um, remember now in warm season grasses we start fertilizing here let's say uh, late August we want to start our fertilizing we fertilize we fertilize we fertilize and then as we go through September we taper down and we want to lower down because October is the point really now this is on my schedule for Georgia just adjust it based on your temperatures but when I start to get into the 70s when I start to see the lower 80s and the 70s for the highs that's when my lawn is not going to go dormant but it's just going to sort of slow down and what I don't want to do with warm season like uh, Bermuda grasses and warm season grasses is I don't want to be dumping fertilizer late I don't I want to shut off all my fertilizer before that month of October comes in and we don't want to push it because the lawn's getting ready to go to sleep it's storing up energy it's storing up nutrients it's storing up carbohydrates in the roots and so we just want to leave it we don't want to create that late season cool energy now cool season lawns are a little bit different cool season lawns we're actually gonna keep fertilizing further into the cooler season but for warm season people you're gonna taper off now let's talk about the NPK numbers if you go to the link below in this description I'm going to break out and I'm going to list links to if you want to do your own research or read up on it all the university studies all the extension offices and the people that I'm talking to and doing an interview on I'm doing an interview with John Pope next week who is an agronomist from Penn State University he has probably 40 years experience in the agricultural turf and fertilizer industry and we're gonna we're gonna talk about fall fertilizers but I had a conversation with him last week and he said yeah he said the job of a fall fertilizer is just broad spectrum nutrition so that's why everyone recommends a 4-1-2 ratio so it's a 4-1-2 ratio is what you want to put down what's PGF complete it's a 4-1-2 ratio take 4-1-2 multiply it times 4 you get 16-4-8 16-4-8 is a 4-1-2 ratio plus so those are your macros that's your nitrogen phosphorus and potassium plus we're putting down micronutrients we're putting down micronutrients plus we're putting down humic acid to improve the soil plus we're putting out iron I'm telling you it's an amazing fertilizer if you put this down and I like to activate it and when I activate it after I put it down I hit it with water every night for about four days I put some water on it every night for four days and I, I can't tell you how many times in about five or six days you're gonna see your lawn turn this dark blue green it's just absolutely amazing what this stuff does but it's a balanced fertilizer and every extension office will tell you if you don't haven't got a soil test done recently put down a 412 balance ratio so let's talk about those are your ratios and I'll list them let's talk about organics and let's talk about biosolid products here's the problem we want to eliminate any risk or any delays organic fertilizers and biosolids need what they need microbial activity and what we do is in the early spring and in the late fall we move away from organics and biosolid products because it needs that microbial activity 
So I'm coming off a hot, dry summer. My, 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 my microbial activity is probably going to be a little bit low. Or if I'm going into a cooler season, my microbial activity starts to reduce down and they do lose effectiveness. You can even go to most of your company websites and they'll tell you that. So we want to rely on a straight, a straight out fertilizer. Early spring, we want to go to a straight chemical fertilizer. In the fall, we should move to a straight chemical fertilizer. It's a very controlled release and we don't have any other factors involved with that. Now, I want to be careful, I want to warn you. Now, this is for your cool season people. Now, some Bermuda grass people think that they need a winterizer. You, you don't need any winterizer. Don't put any winterizer down. Um, cool season people, don't confuse late season regular fertilizing with winterizer fertilizers. Winterizer, late season, late season fescue needs nitrogen. So you're gonna be putting down a 412 ratio later into the year winterizers i don't like the term winterizers because unless you've had a soil test done i don't want you putting down a winterizer plain and simple if you're using a balanced fertilizer that's a 412 your soil will have plenty of phosphorus and have plenty of potassium to to keep your lawn healthy until the spring following again i think it's oversold and i think sometimes people do more harm than good by dumping a bunch of phosphorus or a bunch of potassium down uh, get going in just before winter, I think you can do more harm than good. If you're using a balanced fertilizer, which is a 412 in the fall, your lawn will be fine for the spring. Don't buy into the winterizer fertilizers, I'm telling you. Um, I, just, I just don't think your lawn needs it if you're using your balanced fertilizer in the fall. Hey guys, so yesterday I came out here, I did my first fall application, or oh, I did it on the world's worst Bermuda lawn over there, I'm, and I put it on film, I'm going to show it to you, but the basic steps are this, cut your lawn, then put out your fall fertilizer, then inspect the lawn and see if there's any grub damage or see if there's any fungus or anything you need to apply after that. If there is, you can mix it into your super juice and spray it on top of that. Then we're gonna water in, every night, we're gonna water in that fertilizer for about three or four nights if we don't get any rain. Um, and that's about it. So it's pretty simple. Then in about two or three weeks, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put another coat of this down. Now, important note, do not bag during this time. You do not, you wanna return all your clippings to the ground. Uh, PGF complete particles are so tiny that they work down into the thatch layer real quickly, not like other par um, un unlike other lighter weight, bigger fertilizers, and that's a benefit of it, but you still don't want to bag. You never want to bag after a fertilizer, return all your clippings. So I'm just going to run through some footage and show you what I was doing yesterday. I was out here hot, sweating. Let's put it together.
So I'll tell you what. <laughs> you ever want to learn how to ride a broken bronco, a brucking, bucking bronco? Come cut this grass. This grass. You could probably see me the whole time. I'm like, this is horrible. Now, even with my scalp wheels perfectly set and with my extra scalp wheel, I've got five scalp wheels on my deck. You can still see as that deck sort of wobbles along the ground. I mean, you get these little round scalp areas, but you know what? This is a darn nice yard considering it was 90% weeds and 10% Bermuda about two years ago. So, and then this is the same. This thing was all weeds, almost barely any Bermuda. And uh, this is the one that we've been heavy stacking. This has gotten at least three stacks of PGF. And man, it's just gorgeous. And I'm gonna put another stack on it today. And this is a great example of how with a milder fertilizer, you can come out and you can stack it, and you can stack it, and you can stack it and every two or three weeks during the fall. It's awesome stuff. By the way, I figured out how to tell you're fat and old. If uh, if your shirt makes a smiley face, you're fat and old. Men boobs sweat. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. I love getting old. So like I said, today I'm using the Ag Fab. For the money, this is a fantastic. If you want a professional feel, lawn spreader, this one has a big hopper. It has big pneumatic wheels on it. So these are air filled tires. Um, the biggest thing is when you go over all these bumps, instead of hearing bang, 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 it's just soft and smooth. Plus it can handle a lot of weight. Now, the difference between something like this and my um, LCO, $170 spreader versus a five or $600 spreader, is the overall quality, especially the frame. Uh, a stainless steel frame versus a metal, uh, metal tin frame, I guess you call it. But man, I'll tell you what, if you're only using a spreader a few times a year, that's the one to get. It's awesome. So, two bags over there. Make sure your spreader's closed. Primary things that turf managers ask for is small SGN size and that's the particle size. You want small, small particles for even distribution. You get up to four times as many particles per square foot with this type of fertilizer. And plus, you can see it's got humic DG inside of it, three forms of nitrogen, your micros, and iron. So go we'll put it up. morning <laughs> before the sun gets out and it turns 95 degrees today let's let me show you some of the results um, now we cut barbs I cut those lawns across the street put down PGF complete now I always try and activate a little bit so last night I went over and uh, sprayed a little bit of water on the world's worst lawn because it doesn't have irrigation I did a super juice the last thing I did to this was a super juice spray last week it looks great. Now, I will warn you, Barb's lawn completely burned out last month. It was almost totally brown. This is pretty amazing. So her lawn last month was almost solid brown, and she actually was away on vacation for a month visiting family, and I took care of it while she was gone as usual, but I can't water it. But man, look how that came back. Now that's PGF complete and a little bit of rain. This lawn looked horrible four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. All right, so here's this, here's my miracle area. We're gonna start calling this the miracle area simply because this whole area was solid weeds. 
maybe 10% Bermuda. We've done all kinds of playing around with it. Look at that. Again, I came back. Now this is the one that has had, over the past three months, we've been stacking PGF Complete on this common Bermuda. And I also, um, there's a bunch of deer just went running by. I also yesterday came out and put more PGF. I put a fall treatment down on this. And I came back last night and I spray, sprayed a little water on it. That's all I did just to activate it. That's just, that's just, oh, that's just incredible. Now this will take a, this will take a good rainstorm to activate because they don't have irrigation and I'm not coming over here and watering this. But it's all ready. And that's, and that's pretty much it for uh, fall fertilizing. Come out, cut your grass so you don't have to cut it for a couple days. Then um, put out your PGF complete, put out one stacking, come back in about two or three weeks, put another stacking on there. Every time you put out your fertilizer, come out and water it for the first three or four days at night. You know, six, seven o'clock at night, activate it. Put about 20 minutes of water on it with a sprinkler or 10 minutes with irrigation just to get it activated, just to start it up. Hopefully rain comes in. <laughs> hopefully, what will eventually happen, hopefully, is you'll get something that is so thick. <laughs> Look at that. That is insane. Totally insane. Get some of this dew off there. Hey guys, so it's pretty simple on your fertilizer. Just follow this simple program. Quick note, we're giving away the $2,000 reel mower in just a couple of days. And we're gonna be giving away another 12 bags of PGF complete. And I'm going to be doing a lawn spreader giveaway all within the next month or so. And it's pretty easy. All you have to do is be a subscriber. So make sure you're subscribed. And then the other thing is go over to the website and look for the email subscription or email alerts. All you do is put your name and email address. Uh, it's not a marketing list. We don't sell it. We don't use it for marketing. It's just our way to keep track of people so that we can use a random number generator. What it does is every time I post up an article or a video, it'll send you an email and say, hey, that idiot doc has just posted something. So that's all, it is. That's all it's used for. Plus, we send out about three newsletters a year, and we'll do it through that system. So it's an easy way. Once You only have to register once for that, um, and then you're registered for all the giveaways that we do all year long. So it's pretty simple. It's an easy way to do it. Like I said, it's not marketing. We don't use your name or email address. Uh, that's it, guys. Talk to you later. Yeah.